Yo, what is good? Today, I'm going to be doing a modification to the Hori Fighting Stick Mini, the Nintendo Switch version of this, and it's a modification that I've been wanting to do for like a year now. I said I was gonna do it in my like overview review video of the Hori Fighting Stick Mini like a year ago. So anyway, let's jump into it. This is a modification that I've been wanting to do for a while. I'm just now getting around to it. So my plan is to replace the lever on this Hori Fighting Stick Mini with a leverless solution. So here I have an Omni. Da -da -da -da, Odin V2. So it comes with this instruction we'll pull out, we'll look at later. And then the actual Odin V2 itself, you can see it's a leverless solution, which is in a WASD configuration. And we'll take a closer look at that. So looking at the Odin V2 a little more in depth, came with a second cover. It's gonna be blue. I believe it's basically the exact same thing as the one that's on the Odin V2. And then looking at the Odin V2 here closer, there's actually RGB lights underneath the buttons here. And then the thing that makes it a drop-in solution is you can just drop it in, screw this down. And then once it's in place, you can turn it to fit under your hands however you feel comfortable. It also comes with a cable and pin adapter. I believe this is female to female for the actual adapter itself. And then that plugs into one of these PCBs. In the instructions, it tells you which one to use. I'm going to use the white one. If you look closer, here you can see all the Hori sticks listed under the white PCB. Depending on how the Odin V2 mod goes, I also am planning on swapping out the buttons. So here's some buttons that I got from Arcade Paradise. These are going to have to be modified. Basically just going to use the micro switch and the button cover and replace the proprietary buttons that Hori ended up using on the Fighting Stick Mini. And I think I'm also going to have to cut down parts of the button cover to get this to fit, but we'll figure it out when we get there. Right, looking on the inside of this stick, we're gonna run into a few problems right off the bat. First one is the PCB is soldered directly to the buttons. And so to remove this PCB board, I'm gonna have to desolder everything on here, basically. Looking at the lever, the Odin V2 has a five pin adapter. So it's basically a hot wire for each of the directions and then one shared ground. On the lever that comes with the Hori Fighting Stick Mini, each direction of the lever is going to have a hot wire and its own ground. So we're going to have to create some way of these things having a common ground and then a hot wire for each button. On the PCB as it stands now, there's eight solder points, one for each of the hot buttons and then the ground. Uh, and then those end up coming up here to this row of soldered things. So these are all going to be hot wires for the buttons and the levers that then go up to this main PCB. So the first four on the right here are the direction hot wires. So these are gonna be for the levers. The next eight are gonna be the hot wires for these buttons. And then this single wire all the way on the left is gonna be the ground. So in looking at this closer, the wires actually aren't soldered onto the button PCB for the lever. The lever wires go into an adapter and then that adapter is soldered onto the PCB board. So I could probably just leave these wires in that adapter and then just desolder this whole board and then the lever stays perfectly fine. The method that I found that works best for actually trying to desolder these buttons is to add a little bit of solder to the mound of solder that already exists. So if we just add a little bit And then we melt that. So now it's molten and we can get in there and desolder. So we get a nice clean desolder. I'm gonna do the rest of this off camera just so I can go outside and do this and hopefully not set off any fire alarms. So see you on the other side. So the plan to desolder the button PCB worked. As you can see here, it is free floating and free from the buttons. So now I can change out these buttons. And what I was trying to show was that the lever isn't actually soldered to this PCB board. It's in here by this like Molex connector. 
which looks like huh, you just pull it out <laughs> so you pull it out and now the lever is free we've done no damage to the lever so if we want to use the lever again the lever can be reused one thing i did want to check to see was the fitting of this odin v2 within the fight stick mini so it should be able to just fit right in like we wanted to just stick it in here it should go right in here so the initial fitment is really good it just fits right in there it has two ring nuts i would assume one of these goes on the outside so it probably fits like this so it would have like a little gap in there like this and then on the back we put the other one okay yeah so and it ends up just fitting on here so I guess if we do it like this placements pretty easy and it's not going to be a problem with clearance like it fits in there really easily and then we still have space for the PCB to stick in there it's kind of like an L-shaped PCB so it's gonna stick out like this and we're gonna have to plug in sideways looking closer at the Odin V2 again uh, one of the things that I was wondering about is PCB board placement so if you were to look at this inside of here there's six pins at the very bottom and then the PCB that comes with the Odin V2 basically just plugs in there's only one way it can go and then on the post here there's a notch for basically the adapter to stick out and it's slotted in the back so like you can't mess up putting this thing in so it would sit in like this but based on how it currently is the adapter would be facing to the front and as you can see here there's basically no space for that to be able to happen so i was wondering if this could be turned and turns out it can't <laughs> very important note if you're following this video as any kind of guide for your own modification of this stick I took the Odin V2 and broke it down and I removed the peg that actually keeps the Odin V2 in place and I turned it backwards so that the PCB would be facing the opposite direction and then I put it all back together. When I finished this build, I found that when I went to test the stick, all of the directional inputs were messed up and it traced back to my decision to do this. Don't do this. Save yourself the time and effort and just leave it the way that it is and make it work. So inside the adapter itself for the actual Odin V2, there is this board in the back and it's all like on the top piece. Okay, so like that's poking out. So we need the holes to like line up. So that kind of basically makes it either like this or like this. And it's gonna probably change how this adapter works if we do it backwards. So that part kind of sucks. All right, so there it's connected. So it's facing forward. And if you wanted to like turn this a little bit, then it's gonna change the direction of the adapter. The adapter that comes with this is basically like this five pin adapter, just plugs in. So you're gonna have to like make the space for this thing. Oh man, that sucks. So we might have to <laughs> we might have to clear out some stuff back there to get this to fit. So now that we're working through the placement, uh, I'm gonna start thinking about wiring. So Odin V2 is gonna basically sit like this, and then it came with a five pin wiring harness. And we talked about before this is the PCB that existed in the Hori Fighting Stick Mini basically took eight inputs, like eight solder points, which each hot wire from the lever previously, and then a ground, and so that looked like this. So we basically would need a five, eight pin, the five pin adapter of some sort, which I'm just going to take, I'm gonna desolder the 
the daughter board here that was for the buttons. And then that's going to expose the, the ribbon here that already is soldered to the main PCB. And then I'm going to take the direction wires from that and then extend them. I bought this five pin adapter off of Amazon. So I'm just going to like split this. So it's another five pin adapter basically. And then this female, the female adapter came with the Odin V2. And so one end of the ribbon that came with the Odin V2 will plug into the Odin V2. The other end will plug into this mail the mail adapter here, this mail the mail pin adapter. The other end will plug into my new adapter cable, if I can get it. <laughs> and then I'm going to solder this other side to the main PCB board wires that already exist. And then that will complete that connection. And then the only thing here I'll have to do is add the ground wire which I'm probably just going to do this daisy chain thing. So all the buttons and the Odin V2 connect to the same ground. So I have successfully desoldered the button PCB. And here you can see closer look what it looks like. These smaller solder points was kind of a pain. So I ended up just like heating up each, each wire and then just kind of pulling from the back a little bit just to pull it out. Looking at the wires themselves closer, so here I kind of sectioned out what each one, each group of wires is, and that just makes it a little bit easier to look at. <laughs> so these four right here are for the lever or the Odin V2, like they're basically the direction wires, so up, down, left, and right. The next eight are for the button, so eight buttons, eight wires, and then all of the hot wires share the same ground and so this is basically going to be I'm going to have to build out a, a way of chaining all the buttons and the lever to this one wire for the ground and then after that just wiring each of the hot wires to one like soldering each of the hot wires to one of these is going to be like really simple so that'll be our next plan of attack here so I ended up breaking down the buttons just to compare them so I took out one of the buttons from the Hori Fighting Stick Mini here, as you can see. And it's basically just a micro switch and a button cover. So there's a slot inside the button cover, and then there's like a peg on top of the micro switch, and then it just fits on top. So the buttons that I bought from Paradise Arcade Shop are 24 millimeter Saimetsu buttons. And so comparing the micro switches, like the micro switches look like they're basically the same, except here you can see the bottom. The ones that I bought from Paradise Arcade Shop have these kind of plug prongs on the bottom. And then the one that comes with the Hori Fighting Stick Mini just has these posts that were pushed through the, the button PCB and then soldered to that board. The prongs are a little bit longer and I'm planning on switching out all the switches for these ones so I can use quick release uh, wiring harness and I might have to cut them down a little bit or bend them but we can kind of get there when we get there. From what I remember <laughs> the board was basically pushing on the bottom so there might not be a ton of space so I'll probably end up just cutting them or bending them depending on how those quick release harness wires fit and then this is what I think I was talking about earlier so the button cover that comes with the Saimetsu buttons is definitely going to be too long so I'll probably just take a Dremel and then just basically starting from here go around and just cut it down because again like this thing this will be enough to keep it the cover on the button so you just put it down and then swap out the the buttons and the colors on them very easily. Went through and I swapped out all of the micro switches with the new button switches. So they fit in perfectly fine. They just pop right in, no issues. However, <laughs> so all of the button switches are gonna have, like they basically only fit in one way, like pretty much facing, the longest side being vertical. And um, 
the t the slot that's on the top of the micro switch is going to be horizontal, so going left to right. And so if you match up the button cover with that, the tabs on the button cover are going to be going up and down, where you can see the cutouts on the Hori Fighting Stick Mini that it's expecting the tabs to be left and right. So if I took one of the old button caps, so here the slot is facing left and right, and you can see the tabs are also facing left and right. And on the new buttons, the tabs are facing up and down. So what I'm basically going to end up doing to counteract that is when I go through and cut down each of the button covers, I'm going to cut off the tabs as well. So that'll basically just give us a, a top, and then we just use the slot to hold the button in place. I'm going through and breaking down all the buttons that I'm planning on using. It's kind of a pain to do this. What I found to be the easiest method, so on the cover itself there's these tabs they're kind of recessed in there and hard to press and uh, it's hard to push them in and push the cover and same with the switches you just push in the sides and push the, the switch what I found that worked best is to just start with the switch so push in the tabs and then push okay <laughs> push in on the switch so now that's putting pressure on the top cover so the tabs you can see are both pushed down and then from there, you can just start with one side, just push in a little bit, push it down, and then push in the other, and then just continue pushing the switch all the way through, and then you can pull it out. So much easier to just do it this way. So I ended up buying some wires from Paradise Arcade Shop when I bought the buttons. So there's 16 of these wires, two wires for each color, and then those will plug into the new switches. These are quick release, so once I make this change, there won't be any soldering required. Like, they basically just plug on and you go from there. So on one end, there's the plug. On the other end is just exposed wire. And so on the exposed wire, eight of these that relate to the hot wire will just... I'll just solder onto the existing ribbon, and then I'll use... I'll use some kind of connector to connect the wires. Probably going to be heat shrink. <laughs> and then the other eight wires will just connect to the ground. I've finished wiring here. We got the wiring done. I'm going to put up a chart to show what the actual wiring is for the direction inputs. Because as I got there, I realized I had no idea and it was hard to <laughs> figure it out. So got the wiring done. Uh, soldered everything. This is going to be the five pin adapter for the five pin adapter for the Omni V2. And then this is what the wiring of the buttons looks like. And yeah, we're going to button everything up here and then give it a go. Looking at the finished product here, I just did some testing and everything works now. One huge thing to note when I earlier said that I could turn the adapter for the Odin V2 around, that turned out to be a terrible choice. <laughs> when I was testing it, all of the direction inputs were messed up and I couldn't figure out why. And then I ended up figuring it out it was due to this. So I turned it back around and as soon as I did that, it started working perfectly fine. Other than that, everything works just fine. Works perfectly okay and pretty happy with the finished product here showing a better view here. So previously I had this facing uh, down, so it was either turned left or right, I don't remember. But I had to dismantle the Odin V2 itself and then turn this piece back around so that it was facing the original direction. And you could still have it facing backwards, but you'd have to rewire it and like trying to keep up with the wiring diagram was already not amazing. <laughs> so. I'm just going to leave it like this. And it looks perfectly fine. I was worried about space being an issue, and turns out it was not. So, worked out pretty good. Here we have the finished modified fight stick. 
So I chose to go with a button color scheme of my favorite arcade stick, and that's the Sega Virtua stick. <laughs> and then we have the Omni Odin V2 here. I did have to add the both nuts here, so there's a bit of a spacer here, and that's because there's a clearance issue with the Odin V2 PCB sticking out, so I couldn't get the bottom plate on without this spacer. So I just added that. It doesn't look terrible. It doesn't feel terrible like your hand is on it and resting on there. You can barely notice it. Just you'll notice it if you look at it from this side. But I did test this out on a game. Works perfectly fine. And I'm happy. Happy with the finished product. I am going to order some more buttons. I tried cutting these buttons by hand. And some of them turned out better than others. It was a learning process for me. So some of them... Most of them I think are pretty okay. The first couple ones that I cut, like this one is definitely one of the first ones I cut. It does not look amazing. And I did have to go back and do some cleanup around the edges because they get stuck when I would push the buttons down. And uh, now they all work perfectly fine. But there you go, there is the finished Hori Fighting Stick Mini, the Nintendo Switch version. We did Odin V2 swap in, so this can be taken out and we can replace it with a different lever and whatnot and it won't be such a giant pain to do it in the future. And we also switched out the buttons, so these now have quick release wiring on them and I think it's basically the same switch as before. And I can also change out the button covers with these. So thanks for checking this video out. Until the next time, deuces.